The only way out is in. What is the purpose of religion or spiritual practice? It, part of it is to get familiar with this function exists in every human being, this capacity to rest into this larger being held, this larger field. It's accessible to each one of us, but it's only available if we allow some of the activity in the living room of the mind consciousness to, to settle down so that the deeper knowings of the store consciousness have space to arise in the living room. If we keep our living room always occupied, phone, television, radio, virtual reality now, so many things to distract us, right? If our living room is constantly occupied, there isn't space for things to circulate from store consciousness. So all these things, they're, in store consciousness, there is way more than meets the eye to human experience. I often use the image of an iceberg, that you see about 10% of an iceberg above water and 90% is submerged. And that's how we are, like only 10% of what's happening in us is really visible or able to be known by our usual ways of knowing. But there's this whole other 90% that is happening underneath the surface. And any spiritual path, any religion, spirituality, whatever you call it, a path to growing your heart and mind, it is essential, especially in this time where we are confronted with challenges no other generations of humans have encountered. It's essential to do that work of making that 90% visible or tangible or, or known because the reason we're in this trouble is because that 90% that isn't known has been driving us the harmful parts of it, the unconscious, the knotted, caught parts of our psyche, not just our individual but our collective psyche are what has brought us to this precipice as a species. And so this work is the most important work to get out of all the external situations of challenge, of climate change and racism and war. And the only way out is in is because until we untie those knots in ourselves, we won't be able to untie them in our world. And, and that's what the Buddha says in the Dhammapada, it's our mind that creates our reality. The only reason we have things happening the way they are in the world is because those exist in our minds. It's with our minds that we create the world. This is how it goes. And so any path, any path that takes us beneath the surface is what we need. I say this to my Buddhist communities all the time. You can't be a real spiritual practitioner if you're not looking at race, how race works in this world, if you're not looking at gender, if you're not looking at all the ways we hold privilege or identities that impact other people that we can be very unconscious of. That's our work. That's part of our spiritual work is to wake up to these places where we've been asleep, where our society has led us to be asleep. So all of that is part of being someone who actually can offer something in this world. But we, we do keep working to grow our hearts as big as we can, to keep learning from our mistakes, to keep growing our love, nourishing the wholesome seeds. And doing that actually is what helps us not be so attached to what other people think of us. If we cultivate our wholesome seeds. If every day we wake up and say, I want to cultivate something beautiful in me, because all the beautiful things already exist in each of us, just as all the horrible things do. If we make a choice every day, I'm going to cultivate my generosity today. I'm going to cultivate gratitude today. I'm going to cultivate forgiveness today. I'm going to cultivate clear mindedness today, acceptance, openness. If we do that every day, we have enough of a source in ourselves of our own goodness that when we make a mistake, someone blames us, we say, okay, I learned from that. 
I move on. But we have this understanding of our own capacity to bring beauty into the world, to nourish other people, to nourish ourselves. But that's why we have to practice every day to nourish these wholesome seeds in our store consciousness. Because then when these winds inevitably whip the waters up, we know that there's something below the waves. Our goodness, all the things we've been cultivating, you know, those can carry us through the toughest of times. <laughs>